Great. Great. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, so I'm going to assume that you can hear me okay and continue with my presentation. So I hope you can see my screen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about why you should consider studying abroad in Japan. Okay. Uh, so I am based in Japan and I run an organization that help African students to study abroad in Japan. So today I want to I want to basically tell you about why you should consider this option. Why you should consider finishing your school in Liberia and then coming to Japan to study. Okay. So today I'm going to talk to you uh, about this topic for maybe about thirty minutes, and then take some of your questions. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about a few things. One. I'm going to talk a little bit to you about the organization that I run. This organization is called Study Abroad Research Institute. Okay. Then after that, we're going to talk about what are the benefits for you to study in Japan, including two things. One is how much money you can make by studying in Japan and after you graduate and live in Japan to work. And how much does it cost for you to study in Japan? Okay. And then finally, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how our organization can help you get into a university in Japan. Okay. So it should take about 30 minutes. Okay, starting with the first topic. Okay, what is our organization? So we're a small nonprofit organization that helps students like you to study abroad. Okay. And we're based in Japan. Okay, we're based in Tokyo, where I am currently, and I'm talking to you right now from Tokyo. And we primarily reach out to African students like yourself and introduce them to Japanese universities. And for us, it's entirely free. Uh, we, we don't charge you any money for this service. Okay, so what we do is we reach out to students like you to talk about university in Japan, but we also talk to Japanese universities and the Japanese government so that they can accept more foreign students. So basically like this, we talk to you, the students, we talk to the universities and we talk to the government, okay? To make sure that everyone is supportive of more foreign students coming to Japan to study. So why are we doing this? Okay, what, what, why did we choose to this kind of do this kind of work for this organization? Okay, so I give you a little bit of my self introduction as a way to tell you why our organization is doing what we do today. So I was born in China and I moved to Japan when I was very little, when I was five years old. And I also moved to the US when I was 12 years old. Okay, I study abroad in many different places. Oh. Hold on, uh, I think we lost people here. Can you hear me? Okay, you're back. Great. Uh, yeah, we're back. I think I think we lost. Uh, I lost you for a second. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Just a second, coming back to this, okay. So uh, as I mentioned, I was born in China. I moved to Japan when I was five years old. I moved to the US when I was 12 years old. I studied abroad in many different countries, including the US, Australia, the UK, and now I'm also studying Japan, okay. And uh, before I came back to Japan uh, to study, I lived in Tanzania for two years. Uh, so I applied to a Japanese university from Tanzania. So I have personal experience applying to a Japanese university from Africa. So that's why I can tell you a little bit about how uh, to apply to a Japanese university from Africa. Okay. So that's a little bit of self introduction introduction. So now let me tell you a little bit about what are the benefits for you to study in Japan. 
Okay. Starting with how much money you can make by studying in Japan. Now, salaries in Japan are quite high. So the average salary in 2019, which is two years ago, is about $40,000 per year. Okay, 40,000 US dollars per year. For people living in Tokyo, where I currently live, uh, the salary tends to be even higher at uh, more than $50,000 a year. And for people working in certain high demand jobs like IT consultants, they make even more money. So on average, IT consultants make $58,000 a year. Okay, so it's a, it's a pretty good salary, I have to say. Now for people who have masters or PhD degrees, they make even more money, okay? This is, this is the money for bachelor's degree holders. But if you have graduate degrees like master's or PhD, you get paid 20% more or 40% more than people with just a bachelor's degree, okay? So at the same time, Japan is uh, running out of workers. So it's actually quite easy to get a job. So this is a graph of the number of jobs available to number of people applying for jobs. So in 2019, there was two and a half jobs available for each person looking for a job. So you see that there is a shortage of workers in this country, okay? So that there are more than two jobs for every person in the country. So that means Japan will need more foreign workers who can come here to work, okay? And part of the reason is because Japan's population is declining. So today, Japan has about 130 million people. By the end of this century, in 2100, Japan will have less than 85 million people. So Japan's population is shrinking very fast, you can see here. So that's why Japan has fewer people. That means they need more workers from outside the country to do the work. And when there are fewer workers available, that means the, the salary you get, the money you get paid for working becomes even higher over time. Okay. So that's for how much money you can make while uh, after you graduate from a Japanese university. So the money is pretty good, but people will think how much money does it cost to get a university degree in Japan? Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about how much it costs to do a degree here. So getting a degree in Japan is actually much cheaper in other, than in other countries, okay? For example, I use my personal experience because uh, I'm familiar with a few schools that I previously studied. In. So uh, for example, at Yale University, which is in the US, a degree would cost about $44,000 per year, okay? So it's a lot of money. Same with, uh, this is London, London School of Economics, which is in the UK, Britain, which costs about somewhere between $38,000 and $51,000. So it's also very much money, right? It's, it's very expensive. In Australia, it's also about the same thing. It's somewhere between $26,000 to $41,000, depending on the course. So all three countries, the US, the UK, and Australia, it's about the same amount of money, okay? Yeah, it all costs a lot of money. But in the University of Tokyo, where I currently study, it's much cheaper. It's only $5,000 a year, okay? So compared to the US, it's about one eighth of the cost or less than 20% of the cost of what you would pay in the US to study. So it's much cheaper to study in Japan than in some other countries. But some of you might say that, okay, $5,000 a year is still a lot of money, okay? So how do we pay for this? Well, Japan offers many scholarships. And I would say that it offers probably more scholarships than many other countries do. Now here's an example. So the Japan Student Services Organization which is a government organization to promote study abroad in Japan by foreign students. 
they, they publish this uh, scholarship pamphlet every year that include information about scholarships for foreign students. So I give you the example from the 2019-2020 pamphlet. So in the pamphlet, there are many scholarships that are available to foreign students, okay? The first type is national government scholarship. So this is something that's given by the Japanese government to foreign students. So for these scholarships, students don't have to pay any tuition. So the school fee is free. Students also get a round trip airplane ticket from their home country. Okay, that's also for free. And aside from this, they also get about $1,400 per month in cash so that they can spend on their living expenses while in Japan. There are also more than 30 uh, scholarships from regional governments in Japan. So this is a national, so before I talked about the national government, but lower levels of government also give their own scholarships. These scholarships also give you free tuition, which means you don't have to pay any school fees. And they give you about $900 per month in cash to pay for your living expenses. And aside from these government scholarships that I mentioned, this pamphlet also includes more than 90 scholarships from private foundations. So these are foundations that's associated with uh, local NGOs or local companies that provide money to foreign students to study in Japan. So these ones, they give you about $1,900 per month to help pay for your living expenses and uh, tuition. Right. Yeah, this is this doesn't give you free tuition, but it gives you this much money so that you can pay for your living expenses and your school fees. Okay. So these are only in the pamphlet, and the pamphlet does not include every single scholarship that's available. It only includes some scholarships that are available. So there are many more scholarships that are not included in this pamphlet. But I'm just giving you these as an example to show it, show that there are many scholarship opportunities for foreign students. So many students like me came here and did not have to pay anything for school fees. I had the national government scholarship that gave me free tuition and uh, some, some money for me to live here in Japan. But aside from getting scholarships, foreign students can also earn money by studying in Japan. Uh, by uh, working while they are studying in Japan. So there are, so the Japanese student visa allows students to work part-time for about 28 hours a week, okay? So people, many students, they go to, go to school, they go to classes, they do their homework. And aside from that, they also work. Some of the popular jobs for foreigners, foreign students uh, in Japan include English teaching, which pays about $39 an hour. Some people work in stores or restaurants, which pays about $14 an hour. And there are others who work in construction or factory or warehouses, which pays about $28 an hour. So you can do the calculation yourself, but if you work 28, hour, 28 hours a week and you get paid this much money per hour, that's a pretty good amount of money that you can earn on the side that, that help you pay for your living expenses. Okay, so that's for getting a degree in Japan. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, there are scholarships to help you pay for it. And even beyond scholarships, you can work part-time in Japan to help you pay for it. Now, how does our organization help you get into a university in Japan? Now, uh, there are a few things that we can help you with. One is to recommend you how to learn the language. So many, uh, Jap many Japanese universities offer degrees only in English, but there are many more programs that are only in Japanese. And unfortunately, to live in Japan, you need to learn a little bit of Japanese to use in your daily life, okay? And if you are to stay in Japan after you graduate and get a job in the country, then it's best that you also learn some of the language. 
So we can help you point to some resources to help you learn the language. Now we can also tell you about where and which courses you should apply for at some of our partner universities. Oops, sorry. Now we can tell, we can also tell you how to apply, right? Once we tell you where to apply, okay? Each school have their own special unique application <laughs> process. So you'll need to know how to apply so that you can apply to each of the schools. And once you apply to the schools, the schools can tell you about the different scholarships that are available. Okay. And finally, we can tell you a little bit about what is it like to live in Japan. Okay. Um, I live in Japan, so I can provide you some personal advice on how to navigate the daily life in Japan if you decide to come here to study abroad. As I mentioned, we have uh, many partnerships with Japanese universities, okay? So we contacted the mission officers at many universities and they help us uh, get information about different programs, okay? So the universities themselves tell us about the programs that are available and we provide that to you, the students. Oh, sorry. So, because we have contact with the universities themselves, we'll be able to provide you advice on tips on how to get into the programs easier. And that's it. Uh, that's uh, my presentation for today. Uh, we have our own website as well as social media. So you can see, uh, so you can take a look at our website and our social media sources will, where we'll post news and different new information that are available from university from time to time, okay? Yep, and uh, I will share this link with uh, your teachers after this, uh, uh, after this presentation over email so that uh, they can share with you later, okay? That's it, that's uh, all, the, all the information I wanted to share with you today. Um, I want to see if you have any questions about anything that I shared today. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for the presentation. Thank you. And uh, it's time for questions and answers. The microphone is uh, an inbuilt microphone to this uh, uh, laptop. So if you want to ask any question, please come forward so that the presenter can be able to hear you. And then he advised us that there is uh, some gap between our talking and his hearing and understanding. So you should talk slowly so that he can be able to understand and wait for the process to go through so that he can answer you. And yeah, we're posting a question to him. Okay, you ask him. Yeah. Yeah, come. Yes, I want to know if you apply to the university, how long will it take for you to enroll? So it depends on the program. So there is no uniform answer for everyone, for every program. Uh, but based on my personal experience, it takes about half a year from the time you uh, uh, make the finish the application and submit the application to when you get a decision from the school. Okay, so from when you finish the application to you get a response, a decision from the school, it takes about half a year. And after you get a decision from the school, say the school accept you into the program then the school will help you apply for the student visa, okay? The school will arrange the visa, which will take maybe another one to two months, okay? Uh, and then after that, you can come to the country. But now the situation is a little bit special. As you know, we're, we're in COVID-19 situation. So many things are changing at the moment. So it could be longer than usual. Okay, now it's a very, very difficult time in Japan as well with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, so you have to have a little bit more patience than usual. <laughs> cool.
Hope that answers the question. So yeah, it does. Great. Next next question. Yes, I want to know if there's grade point attached to the scholarship. Uh, so any I, minimum, any minimum GPA. So the so the GPA will be evaluated when you apply for the program. Okay, when you apply to the program, uh, the programs will usually ask about your grades. Okay, such as GPA, it'll ask you to submit some essays, right, to sh show that why you're interested in this program. Sometimes it'll ask for test scores. Okay, sometimes the schools they they themselves create tests for students to take, okay, as part of the application, okay? So these are all part of the application. So GPA is part of the application, okay? Once you are accepted, then the scholarship process is different, okay? Uh, the school will consider your application for scholarships as separate from your application to the program, okay? So after you're accepted to the program, then the school will tell you about what else you need for the scholarship application. Any other question? Okay, question. Um, is this program also uh, valid for students wanting to acquire a bachelor's degree or is it Post bachelor degree. So there is both bachelor's. Uh, so there are bachelor's, master's, and PhD degree. Uh, so each university is different. Some university will only take master's students, for instance. But other students, other schools, they will take bachelor's students as well. Um, I will share the. I will share the list of all the different partner universities that we work with, so you can see for yourself which uh, which schools take bachelor's students and for which program okay each and school the is a little to, bit different yeah the b to that question is will the universities in japan accept credits from students here who got associate degrees and want to acquire bachelor degrees so bachelor's the only requirement for uh, applying to bachelor's degree is that you have the equivalent of a high school degree, okay? Uh, if you have completed high school or completed something uh, equivalent to high school in any country, you are eligible to apply for a bachelor's degree, okay? Uh, but, but that said, uh, you cannot transfer credits that you have already earned somewhere else to a Japanese university. So when you enroll in a Japanese university, all the credits from, uh, say, your previous studies, it will not be counted. So you have to start from zero at the Japanese university. Okay, is that clear? No, you ask. Let's hear from her. Yes, there's any issue attached to the university? Any right. issue? Age limit? Any age limit? No, there is no age limit. You can apply at any age. Is there, is there any financial problem attached to the scholarship? Sorry, any what? financial requirement? Sorry, sorry, what requirement? Financial. Does the applicant have a financial portion that they have to submit to qualify for the scholarship? So uh, so usually for Japanese applicants, they do because they're living in Japan. But all of you are not living in Japan, so they do not expect anyone to submit any sort of financial information, right? Um, the, union, the scholarship programs, they consider you as coming from a foreign country and therefore has no income in Japan. So they assume that you have zero income in Japan and that's how they evaluate you. Okay. Any other question? Yeah. Do you have any agent in Liberia? Do you have an agent in Liberia? No, Somebody we... representing 
No, we, we do we do not have an Asian in Liberia, and also that is somewhat illegal. Okay, it's it's not okay for somebody to apply on behalf of the student. The student needs to apply him or herself. Right, um, Japanese universities tend to be pretty strict about this. Uh, the person who is applying is also the same person as the person who is going to be enrolled as a student. I think a broader way to find out her question is: Do you have? Do you yourself? Sorry, S A R I. Yeah. Do you have representative offices elsewhere in the world, and do you plan to have one in Liberia? We have an advisor in Liberia who is helping us. Okay, uh, I can I can share your contact. Uh, I can share his contact with you later. Uh, but he's not our representative. He's basically our advisor. Uh, we don't have a local office uh, in any countries uh, in Africa at the moment uh, because because of COVID. We cannot go there to meet you. If uh, if there if it weren't for COVID, I will travel to some African countries and meet the students in your country to tell you about these opportunities. But right now it's difficult. So maybe in the future I'll be able to see you in person. <laughs> okay. Any any other question? Yeah, come. Sorry, they have to come from the back to the microphone. No, no problem at all. Take your time. If I want to get a scholarship, I will be able to go. I pay my own way. The transportation, if I be eligible to acquire the scholarship. Yeah. If she is, if she's eligible, who pays her transport fare? Is it she? So, so as I mentioned earlier about uh, the national government scholarship, uh, the National Government Scholarship provides a free airplane ticket from your home country to Japan. So in that case, the transport is already paid for. For some of the other scholarships, they'll give you money in advance so that you can help pay for it yourself, right? They, I mean, I, I mentioned all the different scholarships, they give you some money in cash, right? Uh, so that cash can be used for transport expenses as well. Right. Any other question? Are we done? Yeah. All right. They want you to. They saw your name, but they want you to pronounce your name. Is it? It's a Chinese name, right? Yes, it's Chinese name. Yes. Uh, my name How is pronounced. You... It's pronounced Xiao Chen. I tried to pronounce it when I was. Announcing the thing to the students and they laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, many people mispronounce it. That's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> but it's pronounced Xiao Chen. Yes. Xiao Chen. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Great. We will uh, keep in contact. We look forward okay. to You did the recording, right? Yes, I did the recording. I will also upload it on YouTube so you can see it later on and share with other students who are not here today. Okay, all right. Great. Okay. So thank you very much. Yeah, I will share some links and I will share the contact, uh, the pages with all the different universities that we work with. So you can look at the application requirements. Okay. Thank you, it was great. Okay. Okay. So bye bye. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye. Bye everyone.